Hello everyone, welcome back to the Marcus Dalalio YouTube channel. As always, I'm your host, Marcus Dalalio. Let's get right into the content for today. As you can see, we're in a, uh, you know, kind of a different, you know, maybe a bit of a different setting. <laughs> I can't speak. There's a very good reason for that. Uh, where I film, usually, is at my standing desk, and that's, you know, a couple feet off the ground. And I didn't want to talk about what I'm going to talk about today up there, where they possibly could, could hurt themselves. Today, we are going to talk about my cats. If you guys are new here, uh, I've got three cats in this apartment. It is a tiny apartment, uh, but three cats and I get along in here pretty well. Come on up, we can talk about you first. Come on. Hey, look who it is. This is Tubby Toby. He is overall the cat I have known the shortest amount of time. How did I acquire Tubby Toby? That's a really good question. When I moved to PEI, which if you didn't watch um, the YouTube videos back then, you probably didn't. Uh, I'm not recommending you go back and do that because uh, I, was, I was going through a little bit of something and I think that kind of comes through in my, in my videos. But I will not delete them because I think that's an important thing to see. Anyways, total side note. I, uh, old, uh, old Tubby here came into my life because I had a black cat named Bartholomew, who I still have. I had a black cat named Bartholomew, who I will talk about immediately after this guy, who was a little demon, bottle-fed demon that had no, no social skills when it came to being a cat. Oh, 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 we'll calm down. We'll get you down, we'll get you down, we'll get you down. In classic fashion, I decided to go get another kitten and maybe that would balance them out. When I picked this tub of lard, up from the SPCA of PEI, Charlotte County, or Charlottetown rather. His name was Brad Pitt. He's a very handsome cat. And I renamed him to Milo. I felt he looked like a Milo. He looked like the Milo that was on TV or whatever. And uh, this is, that's the, that was his name for about two months. When he got home, him and Bartholomew quickly became friends. But immediately after him and Bartholomew kind of hashed it out and figured out you know, whose space was whose, uh, this cat laid down next to the food bowl and just didn't get up. He became, as you can see, very overweight. He's about um, four, I think he's about four years old. I think he's four years old this year. Didn't really get a kitten, kind of got an adult cat, I guess. But yeah, he just laid down next to the food bowl and didn't get up and became very obese. He's now on a feeding schedule along with the rest of the cats and he only eats at certain times of the day. He has lost some weight. The fat has not, he used to be, I'm not making this up. You saw when I was holding him, my hand was kind of like going in and it was like soft. Uh, that wasn't the case about two months ago. He, he was like a basketball, like seriously. There isn't much to be said about Tubby. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, Tubby is, he's sentient and he's there. Um, but up until this past like month, like when I've been stuck at home with him for this entire time, he really hasn't had a personality, and he still kind of doesn't. He's very much so a blank slate. And I don't know whether that's just because of, like, his personality or whatever, or if it's just because he's not very bright. I don't think he is very bright. I think he's just incredibly food motivated. I think you can get that cat to do anything as long as it involves food. Sweet cat. A little bit bipolar, though. Um, as you can tell, does not like to be held whatsoever. Very much so his own cat. I think you could say that about most of my cats, that they're, they're very much so their own cats. Except for this next one. Hold on. This guy right here is Bartholomew. Let's sit you up a little bit so they can see you. My little black cat. When did I get Bartholomew? I got him about two months before moving to PEI. I was still living in New Brunswick. Uh, Lexi passed away a couple weeks before I got this guy. And I was not, I was sincerely not even looking for another cat at that point because I was still very broken about Lexi. <sighs> Old Lexi had passed on. I was working at a pet shop and at a, at the worst job of my entire life. I should tell you guys about that sometime. The worst job of my entire life. Anyways, I was working two jobs over the summer. I was working behind the till at the pet shop. And all of a sudden this guy came in with a box full of black kittens. One of those is coming home with me tonight. So I picked out the smallest one, this one. Uh, when we got him home, uh, I suddenly realized that his eyes were barely opened. So he's still required to drink milk. This cat is bottle fed and has absolutely no manners when it comes to other cats or even people. He will scale your back. Oh, he's a good shoulder cat. I don't know if he'll display it right now because he's kind of like, why, why are you holding me? He's a good shoulder cat, typically. Um, climbs all over me. 
stretches up on my chest when I've been out for a while, you know, like the stretch up, like look at me kind of thing. Stretches on me. Discernible characteristics about this cat. He's a demon. He really is. Uh, like I said, if you ever have to bottle feed a cat or anything like that, they come out very different than if they were just with their mothers um, or another cat raised them. Very different animals altogether. Personality-wise, they are an absolute train wreck. <laughs> no, honestly, they're some of my favorite cats I've ever worked with. But they are a handful. Uh, when I say that they have no social skills, I mean that they don't know I, they don't know how much is too much because they never had a mama cat to be like, hey, that's, that's enough in cat language. They just had a human to say that's enough and they don't really understand that. <laughs> I have scars all over my hands, my arms, and my back and shoulders from this cat uh, because he will just leap on me uh, at random times. When we play, uh, I play very rough with animals, I, just because I get really excited, you know, love playing with animals. If I know the animal, that is, I won't just like, ah, dog, you know, and just run up to a dog and then get bit in the face and then complain that the dog bit me. You know, I'm not an idiot. But him and I, when we play, uh, almost always he will draw blood from me, and he'll be having a blast while he does it. So the other cats don't really like to play with him very much, <laughs> because he's very much so um, a rough player. And that's fine. Him and I get along just fine. He's about four. He's about a year younger than old Tubby Toby over there. Um, but honestly, they're pretty much best of friends. They clean each other all the time. They hang out together all the time. Now let's go get the odd one out. This is Tunzis. He's a short-haired Persian. He really hates Bartholomew, and Bartholomew really does not like him. So he's kind of eyeballing him right now. Tunzis is about 14 years old, but I have not had him for that length of time. When I first started working at a vet clinic down in Galveston, um, this cat would come in quite frequently. Whether that was for baths, grooming, very expensive bowel movements, which we will get to, or just boarding, he would come in quite frequently. And I know, I've known this cat for a, a, quite a long time. In 2012, maybe. Um, and so, so I've known him pretty much since then. Always been a very good cat, but very spoiled. Always. He's a little heavier set, and that's fine. We like, we like him big, we like him chunky. He's not obese. You know, he's just heavier set. Good cat though, good cat. Like I said, he is 14 years old. This is the most expensive cat I own. And that is not because of how much I paid for him when I had to pick him up at the pound. Yeah, I picked you up at the pound. I didn't pay anything for you because you're a mess. You're a medical mess. His adoption was sponsored because uh, he can't eat regular food. Uh, he can't really pass. Um, he, he can't crap, essentially without the use of medicine and without really, really high quality food uh, that's veterinarian recommended. So why is this? Well, old boy Toons is here. Sorry to, you are shedding every, I need to, I haven't brushed you in like two weeks and this is what happens? You guys seeing this right now? Toons has what is known as megacolon, which essentially means, this is how it was described to me, the nerve endings and the muscles around his colon are kind of shot um, so they don't work. They just don't work. Uh, so it takes a lot of medicine and a lot of really good food to pass the, the stool through his body. He becomes constipated very easily. Uh, when he was younger, when I first met him, he would come in all the time because he'd eaten litter and it had gotten clogged up. Being constipated time and time and time again will, will eventually lead to becoming, to having the condition of megacolon, which, which sucks for him, you know? Um, personally, I've spent a couple hundred dollars on getting this cat unstuck. My mother has spent a couple of hundred dollars getting this cat unstuck. And I heard a rumor that when he lived with my grandparents uh, over the summer when I was in training, they spent a couple hundred dollars getting him unstuck. So, <laughs> look, dude, uh, most expensive cat I own strictly because of medical bills. And that is 100% fine. Love this cat. Great cat, very good, and some of you may be wondering why did his owners give him up? That was, it wasn't really in their, in their best interest or his best interest that they stay with him or that he stays with them anymore. So from what I had it explained to me, and I emailed them once or twice saying who had got him, because um, I always threatened them every time they came in with him that I was gonna steal him one of these days. <laughs> I got him. They ended up having to like, travel ac across the globe frequently and uh it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been healthy and it would have it just wouldn't have been logistical 
logistically possible to carry a, a elderly cat that has medical issues around with them, which is totally understandable. However, he's a road warrior, uh, as you guys saw in the Florida vlogs. He came with me there, came all the way back. He's a beast in the car, um, loves traveling, goes down and sees my grandparents every time I go down there. Overall, 10 out of 10 cat. Now, before we go any further, um, let's talk a little bit. So there's a, a lot of, there's a big debate over adopt, don't shop, or you know, I'm gonna spend my money the way I want to, and, and you know, yada, yada, yada. First off, I don't care, one way or the other. Uh, if you are super passionate about adopting animals, whether they're elderly, like Toonsis, or whether they're just young bucks, like this guy, or Tubby, um, or you really have a breed that you are absolutely in love with. Like for me, that's Persians. I've had a lot of Persians over the span of my life. I don't care one way or the other. I really love Persian cats. I really love Maine Coon cats. I know a lot of people who are breeders of, of both. Ah! Whatever you're passionate about, whatever animal you're passionate about, and you have the funds to do so, I have nothing wrong with you buying your favorite breed of cat. If that's really what you want, that's what you've researched, and that's what you know you're gonna get yourself into, you want something that's, you know, you know what's gonna happen with that animal over the course of its life, that's a really good idea, in my opinion. But, then again, most of my cats are rescues. Like I said, I don't really care either, either way, so leave, leave your, your comment down below as to whether you care or not about adopt on shop. Just kidding. Don't turn my comments into a, a flame war. Or do, I don't care. That, that boosts me in the algorithm, so sure, do it, I don't care. But I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Maybe tomorrow I'll give you the, the story about why I always tell you guys to pull over. If you get tired, if you give me a call, if I don't pick up, um, grab yourself a hotel. It's not worth it. Those extra couple of minutes, that hour and a half of driving is not worth uh, the sum of your vehicle, and it is not worth your life. So please, remember to always take the stairs, keep that thang on you at all times. Have a good night. We'll see you in the next one.